Danny. This is 30 seconds fresh. I literally told Wendell, I was like, hey, is the Kyle, stuff come in? Kyle. Come in yet? Uh, he's, and this is an hour ago. He says, it just said it's ready. I said, well, go get it. I need it in an hour. <laughs> Kyle just left. He just dropped his off. <laughs> <laughs> Well, everyone is fresh in their gear, so we will go ahead and get started. Uh, Denny, you got to miss all the great rules we just laid out for everybody, but uh, we will go ahead and uh, you've heard it before, so we'll go ahead and uh, get started. And uh, first, I'll just open it up, uh, sort of a question out to each of the three of you. Denny, I'll let you kick it off as the uh, co-owner. Just uh, talk about what this morning's announcement means uh, as far as getting to announce the first five uh, founding founding partners of 2311 Racing. Yeah, it's really exciting, and uh, I mean, to have, you know, the Class A partners that we're going to have for the first year, and, you know, for a first-year team, uh, this is, a you know, everyone taking a, a leap of faith, uh, and myself, and Bubba, and Michael, and so this is a big deal for all of us, and, and obviously, uh, when it comes to NASCAR racing, uh, it, that's so heavily uh, reliant on sponsorship uh, to go out there and field competitive cars, um, it's just a, a testament to the hard work that People behind the scenes have been doing uh, like like Steve and uh, the team at Pro Sport and and all these partners as well that's had a previous relationship with Bubba in the past. So uh, this is a, a great step for us and, and it definitely fits our vision going forward. Thanks, Denny. Uh, Steve, to you as far as uh, the building of the team and, and getting this announcement out there to be able to get started with the partners. Uh, what does that mean for you and sort of the process as we're as we're rolling closer and closer to the Daytona 500? Well, being one of the lucky ones that have been able to talk to the partners about their plans, I mean, the the, the exciting part is not only getting it announced, but also <clears throat> what is to come. I mean, the, the things that they want to do with this team and with Bubba, uh, marketing their brand, marketing the, the messaging of, you know, what we're trying to do on and off the track is is really going to be something to watch as the season progresses. So I'm just um, I'm thankful that they all um, not only want to be on the car, but they want to be very active marketing partners of this team and the sport. Perfect. Thanks, Steve. And Bubba, to you, uh, some, some familiar uh, partners there in that list that got announced this morning. But uh, what does it mean to, you, mean to you to have the support of some really amazing, uh, some amazing partners as we get started? Oh, you're on mute, Bubba. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, ever since joining in the part of the sport, you know, sponsors and funding was the name of the game. And to finally see it all come to fruition, um, especially through this last season and carrying on the relationships moving forward with 2311 and Toyota, I'm excited. Um, beyond excited, really, because this is the big break that we've all been looking for in my camp and been working so hard for on and off the racetrack. So to have like Denny said, Class A brands to uh, to be with us and want to take this journey and, and not so much what stuff that's on the racetrack, but making a big impact off the racetrack is so important with uh, everything that's going on in today's age. So I'm excited, ready to get the season underway. As much as I've been, been enjoying the offseason, I, I couldn't be more excited to, uh, to get to Daytona and get things rolling. Excellent. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started with some media questions. Uh, we'll let Bob Marcus kick it off for us. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, uh, first off for Bubba, your social activism has made you at times a polarizing figure. So I'm curious how much you talk to these potential sponsors about that. And is there a social activism kind of role as far as what they plan to do with you? Yeah, I think, you know, Steve had mentioned that earlier. What the, what they want to do off the racetrack is, is I think, bigger than what they want to do on the racetrack. And, and that's important with everything that's going on right now. Uh, we're basically just being a billboard for uh for the races but we're doing the the i wouldn't necessarily call it dirty work but doing the hands-on work uh to making sure we're making this a better impact and a better place for the next generation coming up through and and just making it a better place for all of us right now because we know there's so much division going on in the world so talking with doordash talking with mcdonald's root you I mean we've seen how powerful those those companies are of, of advertising me and, and getting their name out there so it's um it's going to be a lot of fun uh, to see. It's going to be a lot of work, too, uh, off the racetrack, but I think that's that's what we all need. We all need to be pushed and motivated to do the right thing and and uh, and live by that. So, um, again, it just shows the testament to the companies of what they really want to get their message across and how they want to how they want to portray themselves and uh, being a part of this sport at the same time. 
Thank you. And for Denny, how do you handle being a Coke driver yourself, but having Dr. Pepper on your car? You muted, Denny. You muted. Denny, you're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't hear a word. <laughs> so sometimes I'll be like this, and the other times I'll be like this. So I'll have uh, multiple hats. But no, I, you know, I think it's a, a good, you know, balance. I mean, Dr. Pepper uh, came in here and, and stepped up huge uh, with this race team, and I've got such a long-standing relationship with with Coca-Cola uh, as well as Bubba did as well. But you know, for 16 years now. Uh, I've been with them. So it's, um, yeah, I think you can differentiate a team sponsor versus a, an individual sponsor, especially since you know, I do drive for Joe Gibbs Racing, who, who is a, a Coke team. So I think you can uh, have both. Um, you just, you just got to balance it. Thanks. Perfect. Thanks, Bob. Uh, next, we'll go to Lee Spencer. Go ahead, Lee. Thank you for your time, gentlemen. Uh, my question is for Steve Walletta. The fact that you were with Chip Ganassi and, and many years struggled to get sponsorship, the amount of sponsorship that you all have brought in for this operation, how easy does that make your job? I mean, because I guess at this point now, your job becomes in, becomes sponsor relations, um, you know, more than anything when it comes to the marketing side. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly a benefit that that Bubba had the relationships that, that we talked about started, you know, middle of this year. And then we were able to add, um, you know, keep those going and add Dr. Pepper. Um, the, the focus now, it allows us to, to really work on two things, you know, getting ready for this season. And as I said, all of the programming that, that these partners want to do, um, at and away from the track, but it also, and, and Denny and Michael have talked about this, allows to focus on the growth of the team, right? That this is not the long-term endeavor to have a, a one-car race team. Um, so there's always going to be the desire to, to continue to grow with the partners we have and make them um, an even bigger part of the team, but also have discussions with partners that will see the value in what and what Bubba will do on the track with the 23 car in the hopes to grow the team into the future. And and for, for Denny, I, I've seen you in commercials already. Um, how many more, how much more do you expect to be out front as the face of this team, even though Bubba's driving in, I'm sure Bubba's going to be in commercials as well. How much do you, you know, how much production work are you guys planning on doing in the off season? And, and I'll thank you in advance and, and uh, mute my line. Thank you. Well, yeah, I mean, it's um, it's difficult right now because of COVID, obviously, and, and, you know, until we kind of turn the corner on that and go the other way, I think, you know, production days are, are few and far in between. Um, but certainly, you know, I'm, I'm working every day uh, on this. And as Steve will say, it's, you know, I'm a part of mostly every decision that gets made. He's got a lot of, uh, you know, we let him handle his side of, uh, of things and he's got the reins. Uh, to most parts of this race team and if he feels like it's a decision yes no decision uh, he'll come to me and then you know the chain will keep going then I'll ask my partner yes or no uh, but essentially uh, you know we have a lot of great people in place and I feel like um, you know this to me is my time to really truly work uh, on this race team this is typical time where I would take time away from racing um, you know I talked about this uh, in a media interview you know not too long ago but December and January are the months where I usually just take a break from racing in general. Uh, I've found for myself and everybody ticks differently is that how do I fuel myself to get ready and be passionate to get to Daytona? And for some drivers, Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch maybe, like it's continuing to race, race, race every single day. Let's go race. For me, I found that my passion grew stronger by actually taking an absence from it. So really, I wouldn't have anything normally scheduled during this time anyway. So th this building process really, it, listen, this is not a hobby, but it's like a hobby-ish feel for me where uh, it's something that's really, really fun for me. Um, seeing this thing day by day grow, you know, getting pictures from the team guys of here's our progression today. You know, here's where we're at. Here's where we're going. Um, updates from Steve and his team. It's just, it's been a lot of fun for me personally. And so once we get to the end of 
you know, January, you know, again, Steve will then be e even more at the forefront of, you know, the day to day, the decisions, and I'll go to work uh, to, to make sure that I'm performing well for Joe Gibbs Racing and my team. So uh, I think that I've still got plenty of time here to, to do that balancing act, but mostly my focus right now is getting this team ready and to, to have a competitive car once we reach the 500. Perfect. Thanks for your questions, Lee. Uh, next, we'll go to Jenna. Go ahead, Jenna. I'm trying. Got it. I had to get my mics right. Steve, um, all, all of these except for uh, Dr. Pepper, Bubba had announced he had put personal services deals together prior to 2311. How did you get these sponsors then to sign on to be on the race car? Well, a lot of that work was was done, um, you know, when the conversation started with Bubba and the pro sport team on, you know, what the potential was for him moving into the future. Um, obviously, he then, you know, and he could, Bubba should talk to it more than me, decided where he wanted to race um, with the support of those partners. So when 2311, you know, came um, into existence and they, you know, had their relationship um, between Michael Denny and Bubba squared away, then it became, you know, aligning the partners to what the vision of 2311 racing was going to be. And they all were extremely excited that this new team um, is where Bubba decided to race into the future and now um, want to get to work on making that a reality, aligning their brand with the team and him. Bubba, I don't know if you want to talk about the process and, and signing these sponsors and getting them to not just be personal services agreements, but get on the car. Yeah, and no, I think that was that was from the beginning, you know, say, so, hey, this is great. We want to, you know, do good things together, but we also got to look at how we can keep things going. And that's that's by jumping on the race car and promoting their brands even bigger and promoting our brands together in these partnerships. So um, <clears throat> it's it's uh it's been really cool to see them come through with me and follow me through this this quick journey it kind of all came about through the chaotic months of this year but to see how they're standing proud standing tall through this uh through this process and wanting to be a part of something great with 2311 michael jordan denny hamlin myself um you know there was uh, it was kind of a no-brainer um for for a lot of these partners and, and moving forward with that so it'll uh it'll be interesting to see how it all shakes out next year Denny, is it easier to become a car owner when you've got this pile of sponsorship right there for you? Um, no, no, it's not. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, there's still, when, when building a race team, you know, I, I can't emphasize enough that we, we, this is from the ground up. Like we're, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at catalogs, figuring out, all right, what is the team going to wear? The, the polos, the shirts, the sweatshirts, like, everything there's decisions for everything and so um you know it's just i wake up every morning and I, I look forward to the emails that i need to respond to and whatnot like you know this is truly a, a ground up race team and we're making huge strides right now and i'm really excited about it but um it, it certainly does make the job easier right i mean because when you when you do have sponsorship and we're announcing you know full sponsorship for bubba next year it, it allows us to put a budget together right i mean that it's hard to put a budget together if you don't know what you have coming in. Uh, but now this allows us to say, okay, here's our budget. Uh, here's what we need to spend. Here's what we need to, you know, have to go, you know, into the future. Uh, and it and allows us to this team to start to run like a business now. And and how how can we uh, grow it with these partners? And you know, a lot of these partners that that Bubba, uh, you know, had a previous relationship to, actually, you know, stepped up in a in an even bigger way once this team was announced. So uh, that was that was certainly huge. We weren't counting on, on you know, any or all of the uh, relationships that uh, that currently are with us. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jenna. Uh, next, we'll go to Jeff Clark. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, guys, uh, for whoever wants us, I mean, you know, Root had made that commercial with Bubba and, you know, it seemed like their reaction was, wow, I can't believe that they're like not shying away from you know, pushing social issues and social change because we're used to in NAS the NASCAR world, everybody sort of being like, you know, oh, you know, we don't we don't want to dip our toe in anything that's controversial. And here, you know, you like looking at the quotes from all the sponsors that you guys have lined up. Everybody's like, hey, we want to help push this. We want to help uh, be a part of this change. What does it say about 
the the lineup that you've assembled, I guess, of sponsors that they're all wanting to be active and that you guys are going to be carrying this torch where a lot of other teams are going to be like, hey, we're, we don't necessarily want a part of that. You know, I, I can only speak from my standpoint, but I, I essentially have a lot of catching up to do. I mean, you know, Bubba's speaking on real life, true life moments or, or times that he's had in his life or you know, Michael maybe as well. I I can't I can't speak to that because I didn't I didn't live, you know, that way. I didn't have to go through those struggles that maybe they went through. So for me, it's about educating myself uh, on these issues. And this is something that these companies are very, very passionate about, uh, that Bubba's very passionate about. And, you know, for the record, you know, Bubba didn't ask for any of this, right? I mean, it was really kind of, he, he really got vaulted there, you know, accidentally. When I when I think about it, it's almost like Dale Jr. when his dad passed away, right? Like he didn't ask for all the, the, the popularity and the, and the eyes to be put on him. But it was because he's broken a lot of barriers within NASCAR racing. And so, um, you know, he feels like this is something that he's passionate about. He wants to continue to break barriers within our sport. And it's up to me as the car owner to, to be supportive of that. But to be supportive, I need to be educated. So my process of that will continue to go on for the next few months. Yeah, and I'll speak on that as well. And, um, you know, I, I much coming into this sport, I've always been different um whatever that is different looking um but i always try to be different from one another you know i would say things i've i've gotten in trouble for saying a lot of things and um and whatnot and denny can agree to that in our group chat that we have all the drivers on there i'll chime some stuff in there that a lot of people will be like what but that that shows to trying to be a leader and not a follower not do the same old thing because that's not fun for me but just standing out and that's what the partners wanted to be a part of uh the root spot that we did was it was toned down a lot um and what we really wanted to do and and how it wanted to come across the right way because there's a time and a place for everything and and you know talking to people inside the sport about giving them feedback on the spot and 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 figuring out what we need to do but it just shows you know where we need to go as a generation where we need to go as a as a nation to to not make it to where it's such a ooh i don't want to touch that you know these, these conversations need to be had. That's the problem. People don't want to talk about it because it doesn't affect them. Um, there's a lot of people like that inside the sport, outside the sport, just in the world that you're just like, yeah, it doesn't bother me. I don't I don't care. That's not the case, because if you're if you respect me, if we're friends, if we're family, whatever, then it should affect you as the same way. Competitors, non-competitors, whatever it may be, just as human beings. We want to step up and, and make sure that our brothers and sisters are looked out for. And that's what Brute wants to be a part of. That's what DoorDash, McDonald's, Dr. Pepper. Every, everybody, Columbia, you know, all these conversations were started because how can we make this bigger off the racetrack? Okay, yeah, we'll sponsor the race car, but this is about off-track stuff for us. Every conversation, every partner. Thanks, guys. Perfect. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, next, we'll go to Kelly Crandall. Go ahead, Kelly. <clears throat> Thank you. I have two. First, for, I guess, either Denny or Steve, I just wanted to see, Denny, you had said a couple months ago that you you thought or you didn't think there was going to be an inventory problem on the car. So does this indeed fill up the season for the 23? Yeah, it, it does. And and again, you know, a lot of these partners have stepped up, um, you know, bigger than than maybe what was even anticipated uh, to fill uh, the season up. And, you know, I can't tell you the, the load it takes off of uh, the management side to, to now start to work on. Well, you know, let's work on 2022, 2023, you know, not just you know, more cars, but also extended partnership uh, with Bubba into the future as well. So uh, allows us to start those conversations early. And, uh, and it, it certainly is a, is a gasp, of, gasp of fresh air for us knowing that, OK, here's we're, we're going to we know when we're starting the season and we know what we got um, and, and certainly can plan out our future now. And for Bubba, you touched on it earlier about sponsorship that's always been the name of the game that's always been a storyline that you've talked about money by speed and all that so given this news and all of these partnerships i mean how much more does that just clear your mind how much does that just change your mindset now that this is no longer um the conversation around you you can just go out and race and it's not something you have to worry about anymore yeah um it's uh definitely a 
a breath of fresh air for sure. Uh, having having the opportunity in front of me, I, have, you know, as soon as the race ended in Phoenix, uh, Amanda and I and the dog, we went on that road trip. But every day, I was thinking about the opportunity that's that's set in front of me right now, and and it's what, December fourteenth right now, so seventeen more days until January one, and that's when my new motto of no more excuses starts. So for seventeen days, I'm gonna have every excuse in the book. Uh, but after that, there's no more excuses why we can't run up front and and comp- uh, compete for wins and show the the true talents that I believe that I have and, and this team moving forward uh, with our partnership with with JGR and with Toyota moving forward. Everybody involved and having all of our partners there is one to enjoy the success uh, that we should have and we will have uh, moving forward. So uh, I'm beyond excited. I again. If, if January 1 was Daytona, then I'm I'm ready for it. Um, but we still got a lot of bugs to work out, a lot of kinks to get through uh, as far as team-wise. Um, but we're just to kind of get information. Say we're again? Not ready yet. We're not ready yet. Yeah, yeah, we're not ready. So uh, <laughs> we will be. We will be ready. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely um, a huge weight lifted off my shoulders for sure. Perfect. Thanks for your question, Kelly. Uh, next, we'll go to Claire B. Go ahead, Claire. Claire, you're on mute if you're trying to talk. There you go. Trying to unmute. There you go. My question is for Denny and for Bubba. You talked about the sponsors wanting even more off the racetrack than on the racetrack or being involved in even more off the racetrack. I'd like to know from both of you how you're going to balance that once the season starts. I know it's really exciting. Denny, maybe you can start and then Bubba. But once everything kicks in, how are you going to balance that and and focus on the competition, but get all this other stuff done? Uh, from my standpoint, I'm I'm trying to do a lot of it now. Uh, you know, getting on Zooms with these partners uh, during the off season while I'm less busy. Uh, once the season kicks in, obviously uh, my focus needs to shift uh, to to my current race team, and essentially it will you know mostly be put uh, on Bubba to. Uh, to to do the things that the sponsors really uh, what they want to do to activate, uh, but you know I'll, I'll still be available here and there certainly. Uh, but you're know, really for me is trying to build those relationships right now uh, and really get on phone calls with them and, and videos with them and find out okay what what is their vision uh, for the team? How would they like to see us activate? Um, and what I can what my role will be in that in the future. So. Obviously, as long as I'm still driving uh, and it's in the middle of a season, uh, my role will be less um, with the 2311 sponsors, but I still will be uh, at the forefront of the team. And, and certainly uh, the off season is the prime time for me to, 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 to work and work hard for the team. And then it goes to Bubba and management from, from that point on. Yeah, to, to speak on that, I think everybody has seen what I've gone through this year. So. No pressure. It's all good. I'll be able to handle anything, I guess. But um, I think right now what's what's going to help out is obviously we want COVID to get out of here and be gone and have a vaccine and everybody be healthy. But I think that's kind of slowing down a lot of production stuff, a lot of the media stuff for us. So it'll, a lot of, it'll be a lot of Zoom calls, which is fine right now. Um, but I know it'll be a lot of work once we get back to a normal capacity. Um, but it's all good. You can weather anything. And real quick for you, Denny. Is it a matter of you're going to be busy with something and so this just focuses you elsewhere and maybe even as, as good as anything that you've got this to focus on as well once the season starts that you'd be doing something else if you weren't doing this? Yeah, I, I mean, essentially it just takes the, the, the rounds of golf way, way out uh, that I would normally be doing during this time or vacations or whatnot. But, you know, again, I, I enjoy that. I, I really am enjoying this process right now. Um, I, I enjoy the building process. The, it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, being uh, if it's at a race team or it's uh, another business. You know, I like being hands-on with it, and you know, and and being part of the building process. And I feel like, you know, I've, I've I'm pulling my weight essentially right now in, in this. And and then again, once we get to Daytona, uh, you know, it's it's up to Bubba on the racetrack, uh, his team. Um, wheels and those guys to, to build them fast cars. And uh, again, I'm, I'm going to be the soundboard there that those guys can walk right over to and, and talk to uh, with the association that we're going to have with Joe Gibbs Racing. 
he can go to me or any of his teammates, you know, Toyota teammates to, to ask questions. And I can't, you know, I couldn't emphasize enough to him during this how important it was going to be to be in meetings with, you know, champions like Turex and, and Kyle Busch and now Christopher Bell. So uh, it, it's going to be very valuable to him to finally have those guys with, you know, tons of experience that he's able to go to and, and talk to through this. And so, uh, it, it's very exciting time for me. So certainly I would be busy doing something. Uh, I found out for, through the first eight weeks of COVID that I, I am nowhere nearly ready to retire uh, from racing because I, I, I can only play so much golf. So this is essentially my, my hobby at this point. Thank you. Good luck, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Claire. Uh, next we'll go to Greg Engel. Go ahead, Greg. Hey, guys. Congratulations. Um, these are major players. I, I mean, and any of you can answer this, whether it's Steve, Bubba, or Denny. Um, is it safe to say that the sponsorship market is opening up not only for you guys, but for everybody? We hope so. I mean, I, I think what's what's the term, Steve? The rising tide, or what is it? <laughs> yeah, all boats. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you hope to. I mean, when you bring in new sponsors, um, you know, it, 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 it's very, very exciting for our sport. And I know a long time ago, um, FedEx came into our sport because a competitor was in our sport. And um, they said, well, they've got a team. So we need to be, we need to have a team out there. We need to have something for our employees to rally around each and every Sunday. So um, we, uh, anytime you can bring a new partner in uh, of this capacity and this big, uh, obviously, it, it's great for the business world because perhaps there's other people out there that say, hmm, they, they see value in this. Why why don't we? So maybe, maybe makes them take a second look at that. And, and certainly, we hope that it brings uh, great value uh, to other companies that perhaps are entertaining NASCAR at this point. Um, and and just, just as my quick follow-up, and this is to you, Bubba, um, with that awesome new jacket. Is this – you talked about the social change – um, helping and and it's awesome and you know everybody should be proud of what you've done for the sport but do you think that's helping attract these sponsors not just to your team but for the entire sport in other words could this be a fundamental change where teams are wanting to not just put a billboard on the side of the car like you said but may help make the fundamental change so we may see other sponsors outside of the sport in different roles on different teams yeah, absolutely. But, you know, that comes back to the drivers um, wanting to take that step and, and be an activist themselves and push for uh, real change in the world. Um, you know, going out of their comfort zones, you know, showing the sponsors like, yeah, we want to be a part of this and then we can do it and, and make it genuine and feel it from the heart. So, you know, that's what I've been carrying on. You know, I, like Denny said, I can speak on, you know, real instances that I've gone through and that my family has gone through. And, you know, that that pushes me and motivates me to want to do the right thing and be the right person for the younger generation to look up to. And, and that attracts the sponsors. The sponsors want that. They want a leader. They want somebody that is a mentor to, to the kids coming up and, and can help guide each other in the right way. So as, as much as we always call it sponsorships and whatnot, these are partnerships. These are relationships that you build off of and grow together with. So um, from the manufacturer to the race team to the sponsors, everybody, we're in a partnership where we all work together to to push the right message. Thank you, gentlemen. Happy holidays to all of you, your families, and everybody on the call. Thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Um, next up, we'll go to Nate Ryan. Go ahead, Nate. Thanks, Lisa. Um, for Bill and Denny both, uh, just following up on what Bubba said, you know, that no excuses next year, but Denny also saying, Hey, we're not ready yet. Um, can you guys just kind of give us a, a progress update on where the team is? You know, what, what you feel good about at this point? Any anxiety about things? Any hurdles still to get over? Cars built for Daytona? Where, where, where does everything stand for 2311 racing? Go ahead, Denny. You know more than me. I was going to defer. I was going to defer to Steve, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you already, already am. Yeah. Now, I, I, you know, I would say a month ago, I was, my level of concern was, probably an eight and a half out of 10. I would say my level of concern now is probably like a five, maybe four and a half. So I feel pretty good about the, the strides that we've made in the last month. Um, again, you know, there, there's nothing that we had that is being brought here. So it's, you know, 
if you if you look in the past when when teams were being built, especially you know big teams like we hope this one will be, um, you know this is it gets announced a year in advance, right? I mean this happened in what September, so we it was been a fast track, and all the while I, I was still you know trying to drive for a championship, so I, I, my workload I couldn't do as much as I needed to, so that's why we relied so much on the experience of Steve uh, within our sport of having that checklist of saying, okay, here's what we, if we're gonna put a car on the racetrack, we gotta have all these things done. And he created a pro great priority list of what we needed to work on now, what what could we defer? And, uh, you know, essentially him and, and his group really had done a phenomenal job of getting that done and, and easing my anxiety. So he's, uh, you know, he, I, trust me, I'll be the first one to call him or text him at 10 o'clock at night and ask for some kind of update, but, He's, uh, he's always got the right answer, it seems. So uh, I feel pretty good about where we're at. Uh, I, I'd say the first car will probably be delivered uh, somewhere probably late first week, uh, early second week of January. So we're just uh, making sure the, uh, the shop's all you know ready. I, I got a text actually from a couple of the team guys that were at the shop at 1040 last night, uh, waxing the floors. So painting the walls like they're, they're just really working hard on, on making sure that this this team's ready once uh, that first car gets there. Yeah, Nate, I would just add that it's the things that that we are going to forget, right? Because I know there's going to be something and that's the anxiety is I think the major the major buckets of things that we need to address have either all been addressed or are in the process of being addressed. But for me personally, it's that it's that couple of things that at some point we're going to go, oh, heck, how did we how did we forget that now? And then it's and then we're behind the challenges. Denny said, you know, when you start building the team on October 1st is the the um, challenge window of fixing things and adjusting things is so, so small. You know, if, if you were able to to you know, have a, a few more weeks to work on everything, it would have been that much easier, but we're dealing with what we have. And, you know, somebody asked me, how how has it been building the team? And I was like, I, I, it, takes a, it takes a lot of help. Like everybody that has been involved in this from, you know, Denny and, and Michael's team and everybody has just been there, as he said, with an answer when we needed it. And it couldn't have been, any smoother as of now and now it's just trying to get to daytona and make sure it keeps the same on the same path and a, a follow-up for you steve just on the sponsor front I mean, i'm curious there, there was a lot of talk last year about how difficult it was with covid for hospitality and all the things that corporate sponsors usually do at track the, the fact that so many sponsors are involved here with bubba and it sounds like they want to be involved maybe more off track than on track is it is it make it a little bit easier for you guys that I mean, it doesn't sound like these are the types of sponsors that want the big elaborate activation at track. It's almost more off track than on track. Well, I mean, we do have ideas of how to activate at track. So I think it's everything. They want to be involved in what's right for their business. Um, and they want to do it as big as they can, as often as they can. So, you know, they realize the limitations we're going to be under as a sport for a while. Um, but that's not going to stop the potential of what they can do so um yeah I, I wouldn't rule out any type of marketing on on their uh, behalf with our team uh, but it'll be adjusted for the circumstances that we're working on at least at the beginning of the year thanks thanks nate uh next we'll go to christopher estrada go ahead christopher thank you um i have uh, one question a follow-up for denny um, you mentioned earlier this morning how you had learned from from Joe Gibbs and how he was able to to service all the partners he's had with uh, with Joe Gibbs Racing. Um, has there been a specific area where uh, Joe's advice has been especially valuable to you, whether it be talking to sponsors, uh, gauging potential personnel, or or building your per physical headquarters to make sure that everything is going to be there uh, for your team? I was just wondering about that in particular. Yeah, the, the Joe Gibbs Racing team itself has been a huge asset uh, to us during the building process. I mean, ultimately, I've, I've been with these guys now for you know, 16 years, so I, I believe in them. I trust them. I think that they run their business well. Um, I look at the way Joe handles or how much and how hard he works. Uh, the guys at the shop 
every day. Uh, he's he's either on the shop floor asking team members uh, within the race team, how can we be better? How can we be faster? Or he's working through budgets, figuring out, okay, what what makes us go fast? What doesn't? How can we allot the money to things that make us go fast? Whether it's being at uh, team meetings every Monday, writing down what every driver says to then go back to the sponsors, give them a debrief of uh, where you know this where the status of their each race team is. Um, all of that has been great, but really, you know, you know, the projects that I'm working on right now that I'm kind of full time on is you know the future race shop. Um, I, I'm sending you know email after email to current JGR, you know, the head of JGR Engineering the head of competition, uh, Koi, all these different people, you know, saying, all right, here's my plans. What am I missing? Tell me what I'm missing. And then even people within other teams at Hendrick or Stuart Haas, you know, here's my plans. What, tell me what I'm missing here. How can I make this better? How can I build something that when five o'clock comes, people want to hang around? Like, I, you know, you, you almost want to create the Google of race shops where it's it's everyone's co-working together. Um, families come and have lunch or dinner um, in in the cafe right off, right next to the to the race shop where they can watch their dad or or, or wife work. Uh, that that to me is 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 a lot of fun during that process. And so that's what I've been working on uh, full time. It's just a long term future, and um, you know it's it's you know probably one of the single biggest things a race team is going to have to purchase. So I want to make sure it's right. And uh, that's that's a lot that I've been working on. And Joe Gibbs Racing has played a huge role in that, being that you know, send to me, you know, here's what I would change. Here's the struggles that we have. We wish we had more of this. We wish if we had less of that. Uh, that's really helped me learn because you know the management side and the ownership side. I you know, I wish I had it figured out, but I'm I'm learning this as I go on the business side. You know, all I've been is a driver for a very long time, but I feel like I've managed the sponsors that I've had really well over time i feel like I'm, i feel pretty comfortable with that part but still there's a, a part to running the actual business that uh, i'm still learning as we go and uh my follow-up involves um, your fellow co-owner michael jordan obviously we know his uh, his ventures with the hornets but back in the day he ran a successful motorcycle team so i was curious to know if he has given you any advice from those times whether it be about things that first surprised him when he built that race team or the process that it took, the time and the effort to build that team into ultimately a success on the track. So yeah, um, we actually uh, have had a little bit of those conversations and that was actually one of the first conversations we had is about you know his motorcycle team. And you know he had somewhat of an alliance as well in the first few years of that. And he found out really quick that, hey, if you're not the lead dog, it's very, very hard to make sure you've got the best equipment available. So how can we ensure that we've got the best equipment available? And essentially, I said, me, uh, I, I can assure you that we'll make sure that I'll make sure that 2311 has everything that Joe Gibbs Racing has. And so, uh, and it's up to us as well to almost create that furniture row type of uh, alliance where, you know, listen, they want a lot of races and they want a championship as well. So how can we take that information, that equipment, and make it better yet. So that's going to be on us to, to do. And you know, I think we've hired a lot of really smart people to, to help do that. So uh, he that was part of our, co our conversation. And we actually hired uh, Craig Robinson, who had worked with the motorcycle team uh, on business development now for 2311. So he'll be coming down from Chicago uh, uh, once his kid finishes school uh, next year and uh, making it a permanent role here with the race team. Thank you very much. Yep. Thanks, Christopher. Uh, next, we'll go to Alex. Go ahead, Alex. Hey there. Thank you, guys. Um, this is a question for probably either Steve or Denny, but I'm wondering with sort of the social activism that 2311 is so involved in, what should we expect from the team in terms of like making diverse hires or bringing on more people of color on either the business side or kind of team side? And is that sort of a goal for this team? Yeah, it's definitely a goal for the team. I mean, we're doing it, I think, um, already on the business side because we've got, you know, a, a wide range of people raising their hand that want to talk to us about being part of this team. Um, I think the the place we want to focus as well is on the competition side, right? So how can we attract 
um, more diversity from candidates in terms of engineering and mechanics and fabrication, all that stuff. We've, you know, we've talked to Brandon at NASCAR. Um, they're obviously focused on it as an industry. And, you know, we've raised our hand that we want to be right there alongside with them, with our partners, trying to develop ways that um, m more people uh, see NASCAR and the industry as a place to build their career, gain experience, and and we can become uh, more inclusive as a sport and then also take that out um, even further and make some of the differences that Bubba started to. And, and I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about, you know, part of what the, the partners have seen in the great work that Bubba's done to date. They've also seen the changes in NASCAR from a leadership perspective and and what they're doing and realize that it that it's a place that you know this type of of activity that they want to do off the track is going to be welcome and supported and so again we're working with with Steve Phelps and Jill Gregory and the team at NASCAR real closely in a in an attempt to make sure our, our ultimate plans are aligned and we're um, making as much out of them as a as a group and an industry beyond just what the team can do. Thank you. And then as a, as a follow up for probably Denny too, I mean, you talked about the progress that the team still needs to make before the Daytona 500. But I guess what would you say is the most pressing thing is if it's hiring or, you know, getting more equipment or whatever it is, what would you say that that thing is? I think as far as the team roster is concerned, I'm talking about from executive all the way down to, um, you know, the team itself. I, I think there's two hires left to, to make. So we're we really uh, feel pretty good uh, about where we're at there. Um, concerns, I, you know, there's not many right now, but I think, you know, Steve had it on it a little bit of it's just the unknown. What, what have we forgotten? <laughs> you know, uh, I'm like, you know, are we going to have apparel on time? You know, is it, you know, things like that, you know, when, when will we have, you know, apparel to sell things like that. So it's just those little things here and there, but essentially I, the most important thing is we have a car with four tires on it on the racetrack in Daytona and it's fast. So that's, that's what we need to do to fulfill our obligation to Boa and these partners is making sure we put a good car on the racetrack and um, you know, it's, it's every little bit of it, right? Is the hauler going to be outfitted, you know, correctly? You know, we're going to have everything in place there. Um, you know, I, I can't tell you how long the list is of things, and no, no, no one thing concerns me more than the next right now. Perfect, Alex. Thanks for your question. Um, thank you, gentlemen, for your time. I think that sums up all the questions we had from all of our. Our friends in the media, um, thank you everybody for joining and uh, wish everyone a happy holiday season and uh, please stay safe uh, while you're enjoying time with families. So Thanks everybody. Thank you guys. Thank Bubba, you. get one of those jackets, please. Okay, now I get one of those polos. We wear the same size, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not like that. All right, see ya. Later. <laughs> Thanks guys.